Hello friends, I am a cloud solutions architect at Microsoft and my aim is to empower every single person to be better at technical interviews. Keeping with that goal in mind, today we are going to solve a very interesting lead code problem uh, called race car and if we see, this has been one of the most popular problem at Google. Though not many companies have asked this, but uh, the companies that did, they are really popular companies. So Google, Amazon, and Microsoft, they all have asked this question and Google literally loves this question. So let's start understanding the problem statement. So this is a lead code hard problem and quite justifiably this is a hard problem. Basically, we are given a car that is currently located at position number 0 and the initial speed it has is plus 1. Now, we are dealing with two factors here. First factor is that we have the ability to accelerate the car and second factor is that we have the ability to hit the reverse button or reverse instruction in the car. And we are told that car can go infinitely in a number line and car can go in like positive direction or negative direction and basically it follows whatever the instructions we are providing. So what does these accelerate and reverse instruction means? Basically, whenever we hit the accelerate instruction, a car is going to change its position. So car is going to change its position based on whatever speed it had previously. And then its speed is going to double. So what it means, I'll explain it to you just in a second. Also, uh, if, if we see the instructions for uh, the reverse button, basically, whenever we hit the reverse button, uh, whatever the speed of our car was, if it was positive speed or if it was going in the positive direction, basically, the speed is going to turn to negative one. Or if it was going in the negative direction, the speed is going to turn to positive one. So basically, car is going to change its direction and also speed will come back to one. But the car's position is going to remain same which means car will only move when we hit the accelerate button but this reverse button is there to dictate that which direction the car moves into okay so now i have drawn a numbers line over here and now we will see that based on different instruction how does our car proceed and uh, what are the different changes it happens uh, so we have few factors that we need to consider in this case uh, first factor is instructions that we are providing second one is what is the current position what is the speed and what direction the car is going into so let's start with this one let's start filling up with the initial positions so initially car is located at position zero and initial speed is one these are the two factors that we are given by default now as for the instructions Suppose we provide the instructions to accelerate car. What would happen is initially car was located at position number zero, which was this one, right? So previously car was here. Now we provided the instructions to accelerate. And also one more thing I forgot to mention the direction currently we are going in the positive direction uh, because the speed is positive. Now uh, the position is going to become position speed plus speed. So zero plus one, it's going to become one. And speed is also going to update to multiply by two. So now this is the new position of the car and the speed is 2 but that will come in effect when we provide the next instructions for the acceleration. So let's do that. If we add one more instructions for acceleration what is going to happen is that okay currently the position was 1 but now we are uh, providing the uh, accelerate in instruction so basically it's going to be 1 plus 2 so now position is going to become 3. So currently our car ends up at position number 3 and the speed is going to become 4 because speed multiplies by 2 every single time. If we add one more instructions for uh, accelerate, basically our car is going to end up at 3 plus 4. It is going to be 7. So let's just clean this up a bit. So now the position becomes 7 or speed becomes 8 and car's position is 7 currently. So this is what happened after three instructions that we provided that initially our car was at position 0 then it came to 1, then 3 and then 7. But notice all of these are just uh, accelerate the instructions that we have provided. Let's try providing a reverse instructions. If we provide a reverse instruction, basically, currently the speed is plus 8. So this is a positive speed. We are told that if the speed is positive, speed is going to turn negative. So this is going to become minus 1, which means that direction that previously we were going in the right side of direction. Now we are going in the left side of the direction. We are going to proceed negatively. Remember, car's position is not going to change because that is what we are told that the definition of this instruction right is. So now 
currently car is still located at this position number seven now let's try to put one accelerate if we put one accelerate what is going to happen well position is going to change position is going to become seven plus whatever the speed is and speed in this case is negative one so seven plus minus one is going to become six which means that now the position of car is going to end up at this position number six and speed is also going to double so now speed was minus one so speed would be minus two let's add one more accelerate if we add one more accelerate basically if this is what this is going to do is that current position is six so six plus minus two this is going to end up at position number four so now car ends up at position number four and the speed will become negative four for the next iteration say for example we decide to add one more reverse over here if we add one more reverse basically nothing is going to change in the position position is still going to be at value number four but the speed that was originally minus uh, a negative value now it is going to become plus one so if it becomes plus one which means that the direction now on is going to go on the right side and this is the whole logic of this uh, accelerate and reverse instruction means and this is what happens on the number sequence so after understanding this let's see that what does the question is asking us to find basically in the question we are given a target value and we are told that we are initially starting at the position number zero and with the speed one so we need to see that what is the shortest sequence of instructions that we can provide that will get us there and we need to return the length of those instructions so let's try to see what does this mean uh, and see a couple of examples that what this is asking us to do let me so i made some changes and we also added one parameter target that we need to consider so say for example suppose we are given the target value to be three so we need to reach at the position number three inside our uh, linear dis uh, distance that we are given so let's see that what is going to be the shortest set of instructions so if we provide an one accelerate which means position is going to become zero plus one it's going to become one now speed is going to become two for the next step and our car is going to end up over here now let's add one more accelerate if we add one more accelerate basically our original position was one so one plus two it's going to become three this three is critical because this is what the target is asking us to find so we have already reached the target value and uh, speed like it's going to become four but this is not going to be of concern because we already hit our target value so since we hit our target value and this is the shortest possible way to do it it took us two instructions to reach to the target value three so in this case as the answer we are going to return two that we need minimum of two instructions to reach to the target value of three say for an example we take one more uh, consideration so in this case we provide the first instructions of a so in this case our position is going to become one our speed is going to become two our car is going to end up over here we add one more accelerate in this case our car is going to end up over here our position is going to become three and our speed is going to become four let's put one more a so our car is going to end up over here and we are going to the position is going to be seven the speed is going to be eight the thing is we were we in we were intending to reach to this position number six but the seven is actually greater than six which means we have already surpassed it so we need to come back which means we will have to change the direction so previously the direction we were going is in the right side direction we will have to change the direction whenever we have to change the direction we are going to use a reverse if we use the reverse position car's position is not going to change but speed is going to become negative one now the because the speed is negative one let's try to add one more accelerate if we add one more accelerate basically the position is going to become seven plus minus one so it's going to become six and our car is going to end up at value number six now the speed is going to become negative two for the next iteration but we don't care and in this case the target value six has been achieved if we see how many instructions it took it took us five instructions to get there so in the answer we are going to return five that we need minimum five instructions to reach to target value number six and this is what the problem is asking us to solve now let's see that what are going to be the different approaches to solve this problem well there are actually two ways to solve this problem first way is to treat like every single value as nodes and use like a breadth first search to solve this problem and treating this as a graph problem the other way to solve this problem is treating this as a dynamic programming problem and google is actually huge in dynamic programming uh, concern like they really love their dynamic programming concepts and uh, this is what i'm going to show you in this approach 
so let me know in the comments if you want to see the bfs solution as well i can show it to you maybe sometime in the future so before we come up with the optimal solution first let's try to understand that what are the moves of accelerate and how it works for every single instructions suppose okay initial position is going to be zero and initial speed is going to be one we all know that if we add one instruction of a okay our car is going to end up over here this was the first position right if we add one more instruction of a our car is going to end up over here if we add one more instruction of a our car is going to end up at position number seven and if we add one more instruction of a our car is going to end up at position number 15. Uh, why this happens because speed gets multiplied by 2 with every single occurrence of a and that is where we are doing like position addition right so is there a mathematical sense behind these values and yes there is how can we define that suppose we define a parameter called x that refers to the number of accelerations we use so in this case uh, currently we have used four accelerations so currently x is going to be four right we are just using some arbitrary variable to define a mathematical equation now in this case if we directly want to know that what is going to be the position based on the number of x can we directly know it yes the equation is if we do 2 to the power of x minus 1 then it will provide us that for any number of accelerations what is going to be the position of the car and this is a really important thing to find now how can uh, we define this theorem so say for an example if we are originally given only with two a's so two times we are using uh, this so currently x is equal to 2 we know that when uh, we provide two accelerations the value we have is car is going to be position number three if we apply this formula basically it's going to be 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 so 4 minus 1 is going to be 3 which is correct same way if we try to apply x to be 4 in this case the answer is going to be 2 to the power of 4 minus 1 which is going to be 16 minus 1 which is 15 and which is what we calculate and why this is happening because every single time speed is being multiplied by 2 so we are we can actually see a relationship forming between the position of car by the value of a and the important thing is a is only being used to move the car so car can move in this direction or this direction that depends on the value of r but the thing is car is only going to move based on the value of a okay now after knowing that what are going to be different possibilities of a there can be three distinct possibilities of for us to find the target value suppose the target value we are given it is located some place like this right now there can be three distinct possibilities and currently we are only considering that we are only using accelerate function we are not using reverse function for now when we use it i'll let you know so first possibility is that we find some arbitrary value of accelerate that gets us somewhere over here which means we are not at target value but we are one value before that that can like as further as we can get near the target value using only accelerate another possibility is that if we do one more accelerate we go beyond the target value and we reach somewhere in this area now the third possibility is that if we only use accelerate function we directly hit the target value if this is the case this is going to be like the minimum number of effort we need to find the answer and this is going to be the best case scenario but that rarely happens there can be infinite numbers and there are only so many numbers that can directly hit a so now let's see that what would happen in each of these scenarios where either we are located before the target value or we are at after target value what should be our approach in each scenario right so let's try to understand this logic with something important uh, concepts first concept is that say for an example we are in a scenario where we, our position is somewhere over here and this is the target value and if we do one more direct acceleration we are jumping away so other logic is that we already know how much effort it took to get here right we have already those sets of instructions so we we won't bother doing anything but now from this point we can actually break down the problem in a smaller sub problem where we only need to check that how much effort it takes to make these moves and we can actually do that why because at this position 
whatever the speed is say for example speed is 8 right if we use a reverse in this case speed is directly going to be minus 1 which means we have the ability to go like on this direction and it could be beneficial to go in this direction for a bit and then come back directly towards the target direction because we already have the equation that position is going to be 2 to the power of x minus 1 and using this we can do some pretty cool results right now in this case if we slow down over here if we use a right uh, over here which means immediately we have two possibilities either we can use accelerate and go in this direction or from here we can directly use one more reverse and then directly go to this t because if we slow down here we definitely would have to use two different r's because first r is going to make the direction go negative and second r is going to make the direction go positive and then we would be able to reach to this target value that is one logic second logic is suppose we are in opposite scenario where the target value we we are given it is located here and the answer we are trying to find or based on the accelerates we did we end up somewhere over here so if we have already gone beyond the target value the basic logic is that we definitely will have to use the reverse gear and after using the reverse gear our speed is going to go in that direction we only need to be concerned about finding this smaller path rather than finding the whole path so we are only finding the difference between say for example this is the target value and this value we call it like i value so we are only considering to finding that how many moves it takes for us to do like i minus t target value and this is a smaller sub problem and same way in this scenario suppose this is value i and this is value t so in this case we are finding a smaller sub problem t minus i to find that how many moves it takes to do this and we keep on breaking this again and again and again if, uh, until the point where we reach to a target position and using acceleration we get to the same value and then we mark its moves so this is the whole logic of the solution we are going to use and for every single position there can be different like uh, options we can take but basically this is how we are breaking a bigger problem and grinding down in the smaller sub problems to find the answer that we need so basically we are using dynamic programming at its finest so let's see that some with some of the examples how we can actually solve this problem and at the same time we are also going to use some logic to our advantage the logic we are going to use is that we are going to initialize a dp array now inside this dp array we are actually going to mark the positions of accelerations using the formula we already established that is 2 to the power of x minus 1 and over here we are going to mention the index values as the number of a's or the number of x in this case and we are going to see that what is the what position does it ends up at so if this is 0 this is definitely 0 then for the pos pos this is 1 this is going to be 3 and this is going to be 7 and this is going to be 15 right these are the different possibilities we have I have already drawn a number series over here as well now say for an example the target value we are given the target value is a uh, value number 7 if the target value is value number 7 do we need to do any calculations no right because we can directly see over here that this provides us the value of uh, 7 then basically it takes us three steps to reach to the value no target number 7 so in the answer we can directly return 7 as the answer and why we were able to do it because we only use acceleration to get there so this is like the best case scenario this is one of the examples say for an example the given problem is not so simple suppose the given target we have is value number 9 what we are going to do in this case now things becomes a little bit tricky right we are trying to reach this target value we already have our uh, this DP array so based on this we already know that target falls between these two values so it has to be playing around between these two numbers right so let's mark both of them down so first this is the first position that we can reach and it took takes us three steps to get there so we already know that there is an effort of three steps to get to the value number seven and our aim is to reach to the target value number nine right 
also there is another possibility that we are we can end up at value number 15 and it takes us like four steps to get to this value number 15 so now let's just mark down all the three steps that we took to get over here and we are also marking down all the four stop steps that we get to reach to this value number 15 and now we will try to break the problem into a smaller sub problem and the smaller sub problem is that what is missing over here we need to recover these two steps how we are going to recover these two steps the how many effort it takes us for each two two steps if we look at this DP uh, array, we do not find a direct entry that uh, can only be done using only accelerate values, right? But what we can do is at this position number seven, we can add a reverse over here. If we add a reverse over here, what's going to happen is that now speed at this position is going to become minus one. And currently, okay, so position is seven and speed became minus one, right? now what are the some of the interesting things we can do first interesting thing we can do is we can try to find that if we go in this direction and we are able to calculate some direct dp that we can make uh, so say for example if we take one step now the position is going to become six the speed is going to become minus two and over here we took one a and currently this is the position and now what is the difference between these two entries the difference is actually three t we can directly make so let's see that what is going to be the effort to make this answer viable right the effort is that now at this position we will have to do another reverse so if we do another reverse the value is going to become one and now we need to move three steps so three steps means two accelerations so we can do two accelerations what is the cost of this one the cost of this is one two three four five six seven eight so in total it took us eight steps to get here still have one more possibility and that possibility is that we need to find the target value to be nine and we have this 15 so let's see that how much effort it takes for us to get there okay now currently we are at this position number four and uh, currently we have four a's now we need to change the direction so we hit a reverse and now the distance we need to cover is six from the previous example, we already know that if we want to cover six direction, basically we need five steps. I'm not going to go in detail on showing all five steps, but that is the uh, that is how many number of steps we need. So let's see that what would be the effort in this case, because previously the best we could find is eight. But in this case, the effort is these many steps plus five steps. And notice we only have to use a single R over here because once we change the direction, we don't need to change the direction again because it's in our favor to keep the same direction in this case uh, the answer is actually going to become 10 steps so again 8 is going to be the best number of steps we can do in order to find the target uh, what are the minimum values needed for target value number 9 and in this case we are going to mark 8 as the answer let's do a quick recap on all the things we did so the number of things we did is okay this was the target value we choose what is the minimum a that gets us and what is the next a that gets us and then we try to make this distance by comparing all the possibilities so over here we actually went backwards and then we went frontwards but we were able to do it pretty quickly because we had this dp array setup if we see time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n log n and space complexity is actually going to be big o of log n now why we are dealing with a logarithmic time complexity because remember with every single jump we are actually jumping in 2 to the power of n so we are eliminating lot of values with every single jump and this is a very good time and space complexity so i think i hope you would have liked this uh, explanation now let's move on to the coding So before we start implementing the race car function we are actually going to create a helper method so let's initialize our recursive helper method so after initializing our helper method uh, we are going to check for a condition that if the given value inside the dynamic programming array if that is greater than or equal to zero uh, we are simply going to mark it as our successful case 
uh, if that is not the case we are going to assign the current value of a uh, dp to be the maximum value possible now let's initialize our couple of variables so first we are initializing our variable x and uh, that is going to be of the value 1 and we are also going to initialize a value called j and that is going to help us to iterate over the smaller distance okay now we are going to run our for loop and inside the for loop we are going to use uh, utilize the function of uh, like 2 to the power of x minus 1 and basically we are going to keep updating the value of j until we come to a position where we are just before uh, the target value and after doing that inside we are also going to initialize a for loop to find the smallest distance between the two values so, so all we will have to do is every single time we are going to calculate the value of uh, dp of i and for that we are going to compare that what is the minimum cost that is happening for us so we are going to compare the value of the dp of i that we have already stored or we are also going to compare the value of uh, the given number of uh, steps we need to take so number of x plus we will uh, also have to add one more value that is to take care of one reverse function and we will also have to add one more value that is to take care of the another reverse function and we will also have to take care of the number of queues that we need to jump and plus we will also have to call the recursive function and see how many steps does that takes in order for us to get there so over here we are going to provide the value of the target minus uh, the number of j minus p that we received so this is the jump that we take and we are also going to provide our dp array that we have created and basically this is the whole logic behind our solution and once that is done basically we can get out of the loop and now we can compare again the smallest result possible so for this scenario what we are going to do is uh, we are actually going to again compare the two values and inside the two values first value is going to be the existing dp of i value that we have uh, received from the, uh, running this loop and second value we are going to compare it it is going to be this second scenario takes care where we are actually jumping one step above the given uh, values and in the end we simply need to return the smallest number that we have been able to find from our main function we will have to make call to this one and we will also have to initialize our dp array also going to fill the value with all the negative values uh, except the first one and now we are going to call our function okay seems like our solution is working as expected i put uh, i in place of target at many places so i just fix that and uh, now let's try to submit the code okay seems like our solution is working as expected and it is reasonably faster than a lot of other solutions and uh, i know this was a very tough problem to understand i hope you had a good chance to understand the explanation and also go through the code couple of times i'm going to post this in the comments and i also have my own github repository where i have solved like a lot of different problems and i'm going to put the code here as well so it's up to you wherever you want to check the code from uh, i hope you like the explanation